food. So what did you have for lunch? I ordered a jackfruit burrito bowl. <laughs> you might regret it in, a, in an hour or so. Well, I already regretted it because the delivery guy brought it and everything was already spilled in the bag. Like, it wasn't a great <laughs> lunch in a salad. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Noura and you're listening to The Dikkan Show. Yo, check it out. A whole new generation of young people today who belong nowhere. But I prefer to be an outcast during culture kids where the concept of the Dikkan is the, the corner shop or the top We are live on five. Hey yo, what's up people? What up nation? It's a revolution of expression. You're tuned into The Dikkan Show, stay tuned in. Arab digital generation is shaping our identity, their creative expression and their future. So please give a very warm welcome. The Dikkan, the Dikkan, the Dikkan. Welcome to your tribe. What up, fam? Against all odds, we have made it to our 200th episode. Our first episode went live on January 2016, and for the past five years from the UAE, we've shared our lives with you, our triumphs, our failures, and our many, many successes and adventures. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to take a moment to thank every one of you for listening, for showing up to our installations, for being a part of our lives, and for being our sounding board as we've tackled some of the most challenging questions and just the funny stuff as well. It's been a wild ride. And with all that said, I would like to welcome your excellency. Welcome to the Dukkan Show. It is such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be with you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so one of the things that I always wonder, and I know some of our listeners are wondering about, is we want to know what your childhood was like, because the UAE is, has been our home for, you know, my, at least my home for the last 15 years. But I don't know what it was like growing up as a young girl, what, where your dreams are and how that shaped your worldview. Can you just let me know what was that like? Sure. So um, I don't know when when someone grows older, the, the, the memories become vivid the more you grow. And uh, I don't know, during COVID, I've been remembering, uh, you know, many uh, kind of an old, beautiful, sweet memories. So I grew up my whole life here in the UAE and Bulabi. I studied my whole life as well in the UAE, uh, except for a year. I can mention later. Um, so growing up in the let's say the mid eighties, uh, it was such a, a fun time. And the eighties kids, of course, uh, we do have our own kind of uh, hits that we sing along with. Uh, we uh, you know certain. Uh, arcade games. Uh, so um, even growing up, I mean, we're, we're, we're a family of four girls and two boys. Both of my parents been working and still working, bless them. So growing up with, you know, with, with looking at my mom going to school, she used to be a principal, my father in the army, uh, you know, us, uh, you know, just having fun as kids going to school. So I started in a private school and all of a sudden I, I saw myself in a, in a public school where my mother is the principal. But there was no wasta whatsoever. Uh, she was she she was very strict. I mean, my mom uh, in school is the different creature at home. Doesn't mean that she was less uh, strict, but um, you know how 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 they are. And uh, and I when I ask her, Mama Yani, why did you why did you just all of a sudden take me out of the private school? She said, I wanted to make sure that your Arabic was your your first language. I wanted I wanted you to excel in Arabic. So that was her reason, and I, and I think I thank her for 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 this reason. Um, and uh, and yeah, and uh, growing up, I mean, uh, I mean, we as girls were were the eldest in the, in the family. Uh, yet we've been playing uh, outdoors, enjoying BMX bicycle rides. Uh, I remember uh, I can't uh, forget the day I uh, I bought uh, Frogger, which is an arcade game in the mid '80s, and that was like you know this, that was my window to the beauty of um, games and arcade and and computer and whatsoever and information. Um, I studied one year in the U.S. That was an eye opener. It was in the mid '90s uh, again. You know, all of a sudden you see yourself in a totally different environment, totally different culture. We understand that that culture is a different bubble, uh, yet had many friends. And I think this is where um, uh, certain uh, um, journeys or certain uh, spots in your in your in your life are kind of the tipping point. Yeah. Of, that defines you as a person. Uh, so that for me was one of them. 
came back, studied bandwidth information system, so IT, <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, graduated, graduated, graduated from your university. Well, I, well, they're laughing. I don't, I don't know. I think they're laughing because of my major. It's, it's a funny major. No, <laughs> it's, I'm laughing because I actually applied for that as well. <laughs> yeah. So back in the day. I was supposed to be an aeros. I, I, I was gonna. I was looking to study aerospace engineering, and I was accepted in the following semester. But I just wanted to start college, so I ended up applying locally here um, at AUD to, for MIS. And a semester later, the major was taken out, <laughs> and I didn't know. So for another two semesters, I was undeclared without knowing that I was undeclared because yeah. the major <laughs> ceased to exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. I- doesn't exist well Omar I asked uh, I was in a visit to the EU and I was like oh okay, well, so uh, you know where is this major that's the major is obsolete there is no major but it's an essential now I think it's an essential skill to have in a in a in, in the, the business college or computer science uh, I took an MIS course I think in university too yeah it was a course yeah I think I think yeah, from a major to a course. I don't know how that sounds, but this is the rapid <laughs> evolution of, of education and skill set, I guess. So MIS, we're back to the UAE, coming from the US uh, as well. Um, how did your career kick off and how did, you know, how did you get to where you are today? Well, um, it has been, I mean, alhamdulillah, a good journey so far. Um, I mean, I started my life in terms of work career, uh, you know, uh, and there are three stages. Uh, the first one was uh, was in the IT major, um, and then the second one was more in um, human capital training and development. And uh, like after six years from my first and second job, um, there was you know there was much of a call of diversity in economy. Uh, in Abu Dhabi specifically. Uh, and there was the discussion of uh, creating a media hub, creating 2454. And uh, I was part of that discussion because, you know, I was I was connected to my previous job, to this project. And what helped is, I felt, you know, I've been always a huge fan of TV, reading, animation, games. And there was just simple question is where content is created. Uh, what does content creation, you know, do to an environment, to a city, to a country? You know, I, we, we just started remembering when our, we were growing up, you know, the animation that we used to watch on TV, the Sesame Street uh, Arabic version, you know, the, the drama. I mean, we were good in drama. We were, I mean, in the 80s and we, we were excellent in drama. I don't know later on what's, what happened with all the respect, but we were, I think we were up to date. Till we got outdated, and and there are many reasons, and I think we can have another call or another podcast. But that simple question that took us to uh, culture and creativity, and um, uh, and then later on, I was responsible of business setup, and then later on, I became the CEO, and then at the same year, I was uh, I was appointed to be at the Federal National Council, and that by itself, you know, being in the creative scene, and all of a sudden a member of the Parliament or the Federal National Council. For me, it was kind of a surprise, but I was privileged with the trust, yet policymaking is helping me in terms of what I do now, because FNC is all about policymaking. Then uh, appointed in 2016 to be a minister of the Federal National Council uh, for a year or so. And in 2017, uh, luckily, it was back to uh, my passion and culture and being the minister of culture. So therefore, uh, I think it did uh, help in terms of getting me back to where Noura is. is I'm not going to say my comfort zone, but I'm going to say where I fit the, the most that I feel that I can give much better uh, in terms of a, of, a, of a responsibility or a duty. Um, so, so that kind of snapshot of, of my career so far started in 2003 and today. That's amazing. And, you know, like talking about this year and we've been and throughout the shows before and we do a lot of gratitude episodes about the years, about the, the, the year that we've had and the years to come. And uh, this year has been filled with a lot of highs and lows. Uh, and when times are tough, we make it a point to seek good news. Can you tell us what we can all celebrate this year? Yeah, I, you know, it's the, the word celebration. I mean, the you know, it's 
and, and such time as this is a word that we really uh, we're hungry for celebration. And I think when when you say the word, you imagine us being in one room together, laughing, eating a, a meal together. And I think we're we're kind of um, in a different time yet. Uh, that you know, keeping the momentum of continuity in the UAE, uh, uh, not stopping in the UAE. I think we should celebrate our resilience and adaptability. You know, we 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 adapted. We, you know, we were were uh, you know we're being also this year. I think very optimistic. Some people are planning their summer holidays, uh, what they're going to do in the fall, uh, and you know, looking at 2020. Um, there was an impact, direct impact, if we will um, look at the, specifically the cultural scene, you know, the sphere of culture, the venues, the museums, the events that we were celebrating that I just mentioned, the, the, you know, the music shows or the, you know, the theater just, you know, paused. And I think that by itself was a was not a pleasant um, pause, uh, yet I hope it helped us rediscover ourselves. And I hope it, uh, you know, you know, you do, you don't know, you don't know the, you know, how how most of the people are feeling. You know, we, we tend to, uh, you know, uh, run a survey or see the the aftermath of things. Um, yet, the moment things were lifted, you see people just going back to the office, and you know. Uh, going back to you know to to you know be part of the community and 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 you know uh, guarantee their livelihood. Um, so uh, you know I, I think I would say that you know we have. We're, if I'll celebrate something in the UAE, I'll celebrate the solidarity that we saw of the people of the UAE from all nationalities, from different backgrounds, um, uh, even in the creative and cultural scene. There are communities supporting one another, um, and uh, not just institutions. Uh, everyone was responsible, and I think, um, and you know, we 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 never. And I think, as an Emirati, I I grew up with individuals who are not all locals and Emiratis. You know, I I can never imagine my life only in a country with just Emiratis. I can't because this is not the way I grew up, or this is not the way I see the founding father. Even drawing on 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 sand with just Emiratis, I see him with also uh, individuals from different countries who are with us. So, so I think that solidarity, that sense of uh, we're all in this together, and we're all one. Um, specifically in the language of leadership, individuals at the UAE, I think this is something we should celebrate, and I think this is something that will mark a beautiful um, a chapter of our jubilee in the UAE. No, hundred percent. That was that was beautifully said. And it's also like to us, like I've been here like all my life. And uh, by the way, Mawali Abu Dhabi. Like I'm, as soon as you said the arcades in Abu Dhabi in the eighties, nineties, I knew you've been to Action Zone. So <laughs> Action Zone, have a center, have done center. <laughs> <laughs> so so even with us, solidarity is, is it's 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 a beautiful way to put it because even when 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 everything when everything started, we were thinking of more ways of how can we even build our roots even stronger throughout everything that's what, that's happening. So when everything opens up again, yeah, uh, we're because we're, we're here to stay, uh, and that was very important in our thinking path when everything started. Whether if it yeah. was the lockdown and and uh, and the working from home or. And then when everything opened up to years, people went back to work, people went back to their normal, more normal lives. People went to Zanzibar. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a trending yeah. topic. But what, yeah, sorry. Were, you, were, you wearing, were you wearing uh, your masks in Zanzibar? I, I haven't traveled in like a year and a half. <laughs> So <laughs> we we haven't yeah. left. We've we've been resilient here. But but I do think this is the one thing is we actually when everything happened with us as a team, we sat down and we pledged allegiance again to be part of the cultural and creative community. And I think our voice as a team has really solidified because you decide in these moments what you're going to be. And one of the things that came across our minds is, you know. We are a part of the creative economy. When we start, when Dukan started, it was just this idea and no one knew what podcasts were. And even now when we do the, you know, strategic work, people still have, uh, you know, a journey to go with understanding people of the Middle East. But I want to, you know, I know this is a question that our listeners have. What is the creative economy? Because it's being said a lot, but who is a part of the creative economy and why does it matter to anyone? I I think it's a great question. And I think it's... um... It's about time that we we enforce this narrative because, 
you know, when we all start talking about it, it's going to reach where in certain, uh, let's say, meeting rooms that uh, were with decision makers, and this is what we're doing right now. Uh, at the from a ministerial level and um, from a federal perspective and a local perspective, so creative economy has been become an important you know uh, part of our global economy, uh, um, not just uh, you know as a narrative and and uh, and also an implementation. Um, uh, many countries, many countries have realized the importance of knowledge based industries. The UAE, you know, believes in the knowledge based industries, such as. In, in our uh, field, uh, the culture and creative industries, and and how they you know how they come uh, asset to create opportunities and to create sustainability for the creative economy. Um, so the United Nations declared 2021 as a uh, as a year of the International Year of Creative Economy and Sustainable uh, Development, a year even the UAE is proud to support and participate in. Uh, so the aim is uh, to promote uh, sustainable uh, and inclusive growth um, and highlight the role of culture, culture as a vital uh, sector. Uh, you know, it's not just fun and happy and, you know, uh, creative people are not organized or not structured and whatsoever. And is this a job? Is this a serious job? You know, we always get those kind of questions. Uh, so so let's go to the, you know, if the audience are asking about the, the concept of creative economy. It was first promoted uh, by, by British writer John Hawkins uh, in 2001. So it's, it's quite new. Um, he used the term uh, to denote uh, 15 uh, activities covering varieties of fields. Uh, we begin with arts and it, it, it extends to, to technology. Um, and at the time where, where Hawkins estimated the volume of, of this economy, uh, the transaction in, in various parts of the world uh, exceeds $2 trillion. Um, you know, and we're talking numbers here. I mean, and we're talking numbers, and we're not, st and we're not yet talking about the importance of the creative economy as a well-being, as nurturing, as as educating. As you know, you have much way more important. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's just kind of an example of you know someone. Uh, breaks their leg and you know goes to you know they you know goes into a surgery and you know and um, anyway and leaves the hospital and what matters to him or to her not the leg but maybe going back to a studio or listening to a music or being united with their dog whatever it is or their loved ones so that emotional side is more important than any side. Um, and I think in such time and such pandemic, we we kind of uh, uh, realize the importance of it. So so um, so going back to even uh, with with uh, institutions such as the United uh, Nations. So so the creative economy appeared in in, in the United Nations uh, Conference on Trade and Development as the first issued in two thousand and eight. Uh, so this is where it started pushing its way forward in terms of. What kind of activities? Uh, how can we utilize the creative assets? How can we measure them? How can we protect the talents as well who works on the, in, in such industries? Um, so, so, uh, so I, I think it's uh, from a, from the elements of uh, uh, if you look into it, the, the uh, innovation, production, distribution, uh, uh, publishing, and promotion, um, uh, all of that, I mean, creative expressions and, and how we preserve those cultural her uh, heritage, uh, is, is, is the growth of those industries is also, relate, again, related to economic and so social and cultural well-being of a country. So, um, so just to, you know, to, to end that note, um, cultural economy, uh, does matter. Uh, we uh, because uh, because of many reasons that we mentioned already. Uh, it employs large number of people. Uh, uh, it contributes to the GDP. Uh, so the economic dimension uh, of the creative economy uh, uh, is are crucial. It's also um, you know social and, and and a cultural importance that is obvious to us. Um, the development of uh, creativity in any nation in any nation um, it reflects. Um, it reflects of its civilization standing. I mean, this is what would reflect the UAE. Uh, I mean, or any nation, the way we treat our creative and um, cultural uh, economy, and of course, the heart of it is its, it's its talents and its and its people.
No, I couldn't agree more. So, so with that, I mean, knowing you're an extremely busy person, um, how do you stay connected with this culture and creative economy? And how do you remain in the know of what's happening? I have a beautiful, wonderful force of a team um, that is handling the sector, the CCI sector. They're, uh, you know, they're, 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 I mean, the number doesn't matter. Their work shows that they're, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're, they're working towards making sure that we set the strategy that we're, we're working on. What's the strategy? So let's go, you know, let's go just what kind of homework we did before, uh, let's say, the, the end results that we want to achieve by the end of the year. So the team of CCI is a, is a team that is following the directive or that we've been, uh, you know, given by His Highness Sheikh Hamber Rashid, Vice President, Prime Minister, and, and how he's, He's very much keen in terms of shifting and changing the narrative of, of creative and cultural industries. Um, so in 2019, we began to, be, to develop a strategy with the team. Uh, we held a retreat. And after that retreat, uh, where there are many entities and individuals participating, we, uh, we got out with a director from His Highness uh, of how we can com- prepare a comprehensive national strategy to develop a culture and a creative industry sector in the UAE. Uh, and the ministry is in five stages. The team are working on those five stages. They, they consist of eight uh, main goals and, and 40 initiatives throughout. And, and, and going back to your question is, is how do we keep up to date is, is how do we start, um, you know, with the, let's say, the right measuring stick in the UAE. Uh, when we go out there and say, okay, this is the number of this is the, the this is the size of the CCI in the UAE. Um, it is you know we we did we did find a number and we saw the number is a serious number, but we're still working on the statistical way of measuring it the right way. And we did highlight this number to the leadership. And due to that, we are now pushing in terms of getting it right, um, having this kind of a way that is um, one in measuring the CCI in the UAE. Uh, we have the Emirate of Abu Dhabi launched it in 2019. You have Dubai launch it, launched it a few months ago. So there is a drive. There is an understanding of the of how can we all measure it and, and start looking into uh, the aspect of education uh, with our partners in the Ministry of Economy, uh, with our partners in the Ministry of uh, Human Development and Emiratization, you know, because there are many players. There's that interdependency to make it work. It's it's because 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 that there's this economic element, there's this business setup element, and there's this talent element uh, that we need to look into. So the SMEs and the freelancers. I mean, the gig economy is an important economy, and we need to just push forward and 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 look at how can we enhance our policies. Uh, we're we're currently working in in, in parallel routes and and and. And that, and and I think, um, yeah, and 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 I hope by the end of twenty twenty one, when we will host the World Creative Economy uh, Conference, uh, this is where, uh, going back to you, Omar, we will uh, look at, uh, um, you know, the updates. What are we missing here? Who are the institutions or individuals who will help us? Uh, keep abreast and updated in terms of what's next. No, inshallah. I think it's exciting because also like, you know, shout out to your team because they've been doing a wonderful job. Even, you know, communicating with them to put and organize this podcast together was such a breeze working with them. And like, uh, and seeing, it's interesting how we see the work being done cross ministries and working together to kind of facilitate and develop this as a larger role in the economy, which is wonderful. But that's but that's super cool, especially that you mentioned about the that you guys after that summit that you guys have done, and you're coming back with eight goals and forty initiatives, and how you want to take this further. But what if someone that that wants to contribute and pray and, and wants to play a role in the creative economy? How what what what's your advice to them so they can get on the ministry's radar to be part of uh, the initiatives or the goals and supporting this vision? Well, um, I think it's uh, reaching out to us. Number one, in certain times we do a showcase or publish our activities on Instagram, mostly on Twitter, but Instagram, I think its engagement is higher. Um, I think as well as, as following with the, with, the, with the conference when it's out there, how they can be part of it in any way. The other thing is as well, uh, we, um, I think the, pandem- the pandemic helped us 
to push for the importance of it. In a, and this is where I call the silver lining because it showed us that it's a sector that is vulnerable. And this is where we decided to say, okay, how can we as a ministry and, uh, you know, just look at who is affected, who are, who are the entities or the individuals, freelancers and SMEs, and how we can support them financially. Uh, and, uh, and what I want to highlight is, is the first time ever in the UAE history, cash goes directly to creatives without commissioning of any work. And I think it's the only sec it's the only sector that did that. Okay. And I'm so happy. And I think there was a belief and a support from leadership because we we, you know, we we surveyed, we submitted. It's be- it was so beautiful because uh, it wasn't just exclusive for Emiratis, it was the creatives of the UAE, full stop. And uh, and then uh, you know, there was a second round. And from there where you know we did capture individuals who are we're working with very closely in the future in terms of what they're do what, what we're doing we're still looking at how are they doing and uh, did it help them did the relief fund the creative relief fund help them in its first cycle or second cycle um we didn't know if it was the right move but our goal is to keep them afloat is to keep the business going if we can how can we keep it going and i think um, and i think reaching out and uh, connecting with us and maybe being part of the conference and attending the conference, registering at the conference as soon as, as it's there, I think they will get a better and a bigger bigger picture of how are we intending to take this forward. And, uh, and yeah, and, and, and it starts always with a question, I guess. Definitely. I think we're lucky to be part of it at the, uh, at the beginning. The, uh, the your your team reached out and were part of the early researches and the statistics and like being part of that exercise of developing that to support the SMEs when the uh, when the pandemic first started. So inshallah, we'll be part of it moving forward as well. Because Omar, your your show is a show that uh, you know that talks. I mean, there's this conversations about uh, challenges in the creative sector. How can we be better? I mean. Um, issues, um, you know, cases, and I think that is really helpful. So what you're doing is you're you're as well, you know, contributing to that. You are part of the creative economy, you are part of CCI in terms of what you do, and uh, you're part of uh, getting this discussion uh, tra- transcends in terms of just, uh, let's say, uh, meeting rooms, long meetings, or let's say, long voice notes. <laughs> so, uh, so it's uh, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, long voice notes, one point five x. So I think it's, um, I think it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's it's the awareness element, that awareness element, and 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 bringing up those kind of uh, issues are very much helpful in terms of what we're trying to do. So thank you for that. Thank you for thank you for the first thing that I always want to recognize is that for the first time in the history of the country, and obviously in our in our lifetime. We've seen uh, a support for creatives validating the fact that they exist in an economy and contributors to a true economy. It's not this ideology. There is a pipeline fighting for them. And um, it's because of the work that you and your team do. And we're really, really grateful. Um, One of the things that I would like to know is who are the current champions of the creative economy? So are there industries, just like anything, some industries are sort of future thinking and or that there may be businesses that you're looking at as the future of the creative economy in your research or in the time has your team targeted any focal points that they will be focusing on towards the end of 2021 of course i mean um i think uh, the champions are i mean number one are the creatives i mean they're the number one champions i mean because from the creatives number one they're the talents they're the heart of what we're doing uh, and the ideas are coming from there. The work is coming from the creatives. Um, and then and, and their forms of uh, if they're freelancers or small SMEs or, you know, or, or medium to large, whatever it is. So all of the CCIs that, you know, that runs on uh, all of the genres that run, uh, runs under the CCI, of course, they're champions. You're having the government as well, uh, uh, institutions. You have the private sector, and you have the community as well. Institutions uh, are important element. Those those are the champions, and I, I need to stress on uh, individuals who understand CCI, even if they're not in CCI. 
uh, understand the importance of CCI as the patronage uh, of, a, of the CCI of, let's say, uh, someone who's, um, who believes in gaming, okay? And they say, you know what? I think gaming is the next thing. I think, uh, um, you know, uh, it helps education and therefore uh, we're going to, I'm going to give a fund to such boot- games boutique to help develop some games. So these, th- those patrons and those investors as well are champions that we're also looking into. And of course, certain investment banks um, that are helpful. What, what, is, what is interesting as well is you're looking at um, hubs, creative hubs, such as 2424, Dubai Media City, uh, Initiate, I mean, Art Jamil, Louvre Abu Dhabi, uh, Circal Avenue, uh, um, and many, many more, the Sharjah Events Biennial, the Sharjah Art Foundation. So you're, lo- you're looking at as well as the, the breadth of, of, of other institutions uh, who are as well championing it in a way or another. Um, it, it's, a, it's a very long list. Uh, and, and I think it's... Um, uh, but it's just to 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 help suffice that my answer is 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 you know the moment we're going to get out there and we're going to have this clear policy and strategy, um, you know people or players like let's say the Ministry of Economy who are helping us in IP protection. We say okay, these are our champions in IP protection. The, the, the so the Ministry of Education. Uh, and try and, and looking at how it will be embedded in education curricula, uh, getting students ready. These are our champions in educations. So, so I think it's just um, um, you know it's it's based on each one of each one of them and what they can add into uh, or or patron or sponsor. So, a uh, follow up question. I mean, we know that now we have the sustainable develop, development goals that have been set for the UAE. Um, what are the sectors that are vital to surpassing those goals? The, the recent past um, has seen significant transformation uh, in terms of boosting uh, our economic uh, potential of creative sectors. Uh, I think the linkage um, and in terms of the goals of the linkage between uh, culture and creative uh, industries uh, and sustainable development goals as defined by the United Nations uh, are not straightforward. Um, uh, uh, although although the SDGs uh, do not include a, a separate uh, goal for cultural sector, uh, the creative sector is, is crucial uh, for realization uh, of the goals, um, especially those uh, um, pertaining uh, the well-being, the education, as mentioned, uh, employment, uh, economic growth, uh, innovation, uh, uh, industry production uh, and consumption. Uh, I, I think raising the, the contribution of the CCI uh, and, and it's, there's this direct link to it, uh, to the national uh, and, and global GDP is actually, I consider it a, a, a shortcut to attaining several SDGs, even though it, it didn't mention the cultural uh, cultural sphere. So um, um, I think it's also, um, you know, we a cultural economy uh, needs to be a thriving economy. And for, for us, we need to, um, uh, you know, make sure that we guarantee uh, the urban recovery and resilience uh, away from, uh, away from, let's say, possibilities of pollution, carbon footprints, and, and, and ecological threats. And I, and I think it's, it's, uh, this is where, you know, there is, there is absolutely uh, beyond the SDG goals that we can contribute to. Uh, a question from my side is that, as you know, the, the creative and culture industries are all community-based, uh, each and every one of them. Uh, what do you believe is the main challenges these industries are facing? And like, what can we as the Canner audience do to rise to the challenge and help? Um, I think the challenge is, is the tendency to, uh, to always separate uh, the economic aspect of, from any discussion and culture. So it's like, uh, yeah, this is an economic aspect, but uh, well, what does culture has to do with it? You know, I mean, this this question, I mean, uh, we need always to be ready to answer this question. Why is, yes, why is culture is connected to economic uh, contribution? Uh, so the needs to change, that needs to change. We need to, uh, so shows, you know, like yours and audience such as yours should should appreciate the fact that the, the, the industry is not just about uh, 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 as we mentioned, content and art and and cinema and uh, li- you know it's it's about it's about livelihood. Uh, 
employment, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, economic growth. And I mean, during the, I mean, we're still, uh, of course, COVID is still there, but when, you know, the beginning of the pandemic where, you know, people were just waiting for a, for a, a YouTube musical or a, or a live uh, performances. And uh, everyone was waiting for that. Everyone, everyone was just waiting. I mean, no matter. So, I mean, I, and I think, I, I hope that will push that cynical kind of uh, term of let's not connect culture and economy. Um, and, uh, you know, and um, as, as I mentioned, uh, how can we change the stereotype? But I think Dukkan changes the stereotype in that, changes the stereotype of, of, uh, of Arabs in, in, in media, uh, you know, uh, shedding light uh, also. Uh, I remember in UAE's law and uh, the fields of intellectual property and uh, please continue doing that because if we don't hear you, if you don't say it, if you don't raise it, and, you know, sometimes we get uh, very much, um, you know, uh, living in our own bubble because we're trying to finish certain projects. And uh, it's, it's, it's good uh, in terms of every now and then to get uh, a constructive nudge from you guys and from others. Thank you very much. We will we'll continue doing what we, we're doing. Uh, and, and, you know, I know you mentioned uh, about the new initiatives and the new goals that you guys are going, uh, that you have come up with that will, will be, be there in the conference. Everyone make sure you attend the <laughs> conference when it goes live. Uh, but we'll be there. But what excites you the most about the future? Your Excellency, I'm I'm very much. I mean, I'm very much excited, and I hope my team for prospect of this immense immense growth of the creative economy in the UAE. Uh, I mean, the UAE is a major player when it comes to CCI in the Middle East and uh, and North African region, uh, due to you know due to many great projects and 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 uh, and, and certain emirates. Uh, the sector is ranging from architecture and design and. Uh, to gaming, to uh, to visual arts, I think the UAE's uh, permanent uh, position as an innovation hub helped in that uh, for a central growth for for CCI and even to make our job easier. Uh, you know, I'm, I mean, the, the infrastructure is there, the players are there. Uh, it's just how to connect the dots and measure it and 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 push for it and uh, put the right strategy strategy and the enabling policy. So we have invested uh, and and facilitated uh, in the creation of those creative and you know creative, let's say cities uh, that I mentioned just earlier, um, and the establishment of those institutions. So uh, so I think um, the continuous growth. Uh, uh, and an immersive technological, uh, artificial intelligence, etc., will will also help the prospect of the CCI because technology is very, playing a very strong role in that, and it's part of the CCI as well. Uh, and how you know, I, I, you know, AI will, will will affect artists and their work in the future. And you know, we're now talking about NFTs, and uh, I don't know, did, did you buy any NFT? I'm I, I, I'm like. Uh, I, I'm still old fashioned. I, I need to see it in front of me <laughs> um, rather than, or have it, you know, I, I need to touch it. I still need to touch it. <laughs> The bravery of it excites us. And so that's the, that's, we, we actually, we actually feel, you know, there is something about the future, but I don't think it's the end all be all because we cannot lose the tradition of going into a gallery and experiencing the art and seeing brush strokes in real, in real life. We, we know we, that tension is always there for us, but we see the future and young people understand it. <laughs> they get it, you know? I'm still, I'm still trying to get over the fact that I can't buy a CD. I have to, I'm, I'm buying it off directly to your PlayStation. Like, you know, back in the day, you go like, oh, when FIFA, we have FIFA 2017, Jeep had CD. And you know, you enjoy it. Now, no, there's a PS store. You can't negotiate it. You have to pay this much. There's no, you know, my, you know, you know, I'm going to come next week for the WWE. No. Well, well, well. After the CD, there is the USB and whatsoever. But, but I think with with going to the virtual reality and uh, the NFTs and the hybrid kind of uh, the hybrid experience. So even the conference, the conference that we talked about is going to be hybrid. And I think this is the beauty where there is the audience of the high, of the virtual model or the NFTs and the you know and and the and, and the ones who wants to get the real thing and uh, i don't know maybe in 50 years the real thing will be only nfts we don't know you know what's going to happen but i i think it's it's just um uh, the way the youth i mean i mean the way they uh, 
they work their, their se- themselves around, you know, education, chatting with others, getting to introduce one another, being in another virtual ro- world with new friends that they never met. It's, you know, I think they, I think it's normal that they operate differently in such way and they think differently. Um, and I think our job is how can we keep ahead or abreast in terms of development or uh, ahead of the game? It's not necessary that I know how to work it out. I think it's how can I offer it uh, and understand that this is, this is what uh, fits their lifestyle more than mine. Yeah, you should meet my eight-year-old niece. She's our she's our consultant. She's our <laughs> she's our youth consultant at Kawi's eight, and and Ot has a nine-year-old brother. And we 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 constantly come to terms with the fact that you know their online relationships are equally um, important and real than our real life. They, there is an, they, their their um, negotiation with the online world is equally valid. It has the same dopamine hits. It has the same adrenaline hits. So I get it. And I, I want to be a part of nurturing that because artists and the cultural and creative community exist there as well. And we need to be wherever they are. And I think, and I think this is, this is a very interesting kind of, uh, maybe a thought provoking, um, idea of, uh, what if we, got nine years old or 10 years old to be our consultants in certain things because, yes. you know, we, we, we consultants shouldn't be just the ones who will, you know, send you hundreds of uh, PowerPoints pages with numbers and, uh, you know, um, <laughs> pie charts on them. I think they're, I think those 80 and nine years old, I mean, we, we need to ask them those questions in terms of what's next, because I have a nine years old niece and, I, I sometimes look at the way she, you know, the shows she watches, the games. I forgot the game she was playing. Uh, Graphic-wise, it didn't look nice. Minecraft, the squares, it's just a bunch of cubes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I'm like looking at Minecraft, I'm like, why, why does it remind me of my Commodore days? I mean, Amiga day. I mean, long time ago. It's the same style. And I thought there would be more evolution because it should, in terms of how... It will look like, but it's uh, it looked uh, to them addictive. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yes. You know why? Because it's so simple for them to create on it. Like I look at my niece and she builds mansions with like springs inside yep. the house and there's a pool and I'm <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yes. This is where her imagination <laughs> lives. And uh, this is what one of the things we had said uh, before at Dukan, we said we need a consultant from every age era. We need someone in their 10s, in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s, and so on, so we can actually do our jobs properly. And so, yeah, we've we've covered the 10s, <laughs> but we're moving upwards. And I think that that way we have a more <laughs> wide world view, you know, it, it's worked for us. And the beauty about it is that what, like, even when we have, like, when I have conversations with my niece or when we have conversations with Oti's brother or even when she has a conversation with my niece, it's more of a, like, full-on conversation to understand them. And when she answers you back and she, like, you have two thoughts in your head. One, you go, you go like, oh, my God, it, wow, yeah. you're only eight or nine. <laughs> and the second one is, like, Allah is tur. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh my God, what is going to happen in like 10 oh, or right. 15 or 20 yeah. years when she's like yeah. 25? You know what I mean? Or he's, yeah. 30, yeah. and you're like, oof, yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Inshallah, we, we live through to see everything. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It was, um, it was very, it was very funny because like, even with, with, uh, with my brother, it's like, I, because he's been, you know, doing his school from home, I would go down and like, just sit next to him and watch what he's doing. And if he freaks out, he's like, wait, what are you, why are you here? I'm like, no, man, I'm curious. Like, what, what is this that you're doing? <laughs> and, you know, so it, it, it was Minecraft and now there's Roblox, which is a new game that is multiple universes within universes like Minecraft that they create and compete in. He plays with his friends via Microsoft Teams and then, then he'll switch to watch anime. I'm like, how do you know about anime? And he sits and reads it with the subtitles. Like, he would only watch in Japanese with the subtitles, you know, and it's just fascinating how they interact with the world. And then, you know, needs to go out to his, um, to the neighbor's play, uh, to play with the neighbor's kid. We'll get on a skateboard and head out. So like this online and offline interaction that they're experiencing is very different from ours. They're so native. I agree. And, and, and the multi, the multifaceted di- dimensions of, 
of observing information at the same time in different levels, the offline, the screen itself, how many things happening on that screen or how, how many windows, okay? And then comes uh, interacting with their friends and everyone. So, I, and, I, and I think this is where, I mean, I mean, for us, we, we lived in a 2D, uh, you know, 2D days. I mean, the, the, the mobile, I mean, for me, okay. Uh, I mean, I, I experienced the, 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 the Nokia when it was just uh, oh, yeah. uh, black and white, okay. Yep. <laughs> and, the, and the flip mobile and then the Ericsson days when it was, oh, the cage and the, oh, yes. And then there's the, <laughs> the Blackberry days and we were just obsessed with the messenger uh, you know, and and this evolution by itself, I mean, we're, we're very much, you know, we 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 you know we we adapt. But what right now you reach to a point where the mind should have been. It's like the gamers; they think differently. You know, uh, if you're not a gamer, you know, it's the, the way you're you're very quick in terms of um, you know uh, observing information or responding or whatever it is. So for them, it's like gamers since they're in the age of what three years old with the ipad and knowing what to push and what not to push uh so so yeah um i think um it's it's so fascinating but definitely i wasn't my my i wasn't that good i mean uh, we were we were totally kind of i don't know innocent right. maybe so that's the word so. <laughs> I yeah, think we so. were worried. We, yeah, we, yeah, we. Yeah, yes, that's that. Let's just use innocent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be like, I'm going I'm with innocent. innocent. <laughs> Your Excellency, I have a quick question. When you when you went to the opening of the Italian Pavilion, we all three of us, because by the way, like away from all this, all three of us are very infatuated with sneakers and uh, everything. So we looked, we found, and some of and some of your appearances, you're you're rocking different sneakers. Okay. So tell us a bit about that. Like, do you have like, like, do you have a collection or uh, it's just a couple or uh, what is it? Are we like, <laughs> tell me more. Um, I have this guilty kind of, uh, uh, you know, pleasures uh, of, of collecting glasses and, and shoes. And with, uh, with sneakers, yes, I, uh, I have a problem in terms of uh, um, where to... <laughs> what kind of problem? <laughs> you can't see it right now, but he's sitting in a room oh of sneakers, God. Your Excellency. He's sitting in a in a den of sneakers. Uh, I don't know if it's a problem, but it's. I think it's the way we love to express ourselves. I think uh, you know. Uh, I'm I'm a, I'm a person who wants to express. I'm, I'm not gonna you know wear. A, uh, a colorful shayla or abaya, you know, I'm, I'm pretty dull in those things. But uh, when it comes to the glasses and the shoes, no, it's a kind of a different game. So uh, uh, we'll film a, a video of us taking you sneaker shopping. I think that will be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Would love to. And buying me some deal. Is that... <laughs> yes, of course. You got it. Of course. <laughs> 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 All right. So speaking about the the kids and everything, um, for you know, for Hamoudi, my brother, Akawiz niece, and all the young creative minds, you know that that are going up today, what advice do you have for them? So the kids who are in in, in a country like the UAE, this is where you know this is where opportunities are just just they're they're vast and 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 information is just a, again is a click of a button, they can you know, study or they can know about, as you said, uh, you know, anime, different languages, different games, different, I don't know, um, you know, ideas for their career and in and, and an early, early stage of their lives, totally different. The pace is totally different than back then. For us, I mean, we needed to graduate from university to know what's going on. And did I, did I major the right major even that I graduated? Am I, am I in the right job? Uh, but now you're talking about generation that we're trying, for example, with my hat inside university, we're trying to introduce internship in year one, not, you know, not after four years. You need to get it. You need to understand. You need to be responsible from, I don't know, from year one. And then when you graduate, well, you have a job guaranteed. Um, and, and, and I think, and you, have, and you have experience because this kind of everything that is, you know, easy the information school whatever it is you know um and you know it's luckily here we have it here in the UAE so I think my you know with the with with that I think my advice is we don't want we you know it's like okay so 
Uh, Edward Said, uh, in his book, Orientalism in 1978, uh, starts with a question, what one really is? And I think if you ask yourself your question specifically as an Arab, specifically as someone in this region, I think this is a very important question and you won't get it by, I don't know, a video game or uh, 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 Minecraft. You'll get it by reading. You're going to get it by history. You're, you need to immerse yourself if you're into science, immerse yourself with the music a little bit or philosophy. You know, don't be dull. Don't be just, you know. And I know, I mean, I know this generation can do more than one major uh, because of the way they function. Uh, yet, I think there has to be a depth. And that depth doesn't come quickly. And I think this is the question we need to ask ourselves. Nora, who you really is? I mean, who are you? Um, and from there... It's the question of my identity, of my history, of my country, of my values, of what I believe in, because that constructs a human being, my philosophy, uh, and my uh, how I accept one another, and how humanity raises above everything. Um, uh, so, so I think it's, um, I think it's uh, maybe the opposite of what they're used to. It's uh, reality is important because even. With pandemic, we most of us went back to basic and are missing basic. Uh, uh, who who was blessed with a backyard loved their backyard. Who wasn't blessed with a backyard and an apartment just was you know craving uh, uh, even sitting near a, a green plant. So we went back to basics, and we were in 2020. Uh, so so go back to basics. Read more. Ask yourself a question: Who is who? who uh, who, what one really is. Sorry. And, um, and yeah, and it's... Um... You know, especially now when you mentioned the, the thing about the internship from year one, and I'm sure uh, when you guys announce all the initiatives, there's going to be a lot of, like, for me, uh, OT, and you go like, oh, I wish I was young again, or I wish I was back in school, or I wish I was back in university. But, you know, it's also one of the reasons why why we do what we do on the Can Show and on the Can Media is to also contribute back to this generation. And please, whatever we can do to help support uh, any of the initiatives of the, of the goals through us, through our circle, through anything, please let us know. We'd love to be part because خلص, we can't live it anymore. خلص, we're old. Reem's old. OT's old. <laughs> Anna, I'm the youngest one, so not so much. So I'm good. What, what do you mean? Speak for yourself. Speak <laughs> <But> for yourself. <laughs> Speak for yourself. But the, the question, the one thing, w w the Ken started as trying to help third culture, third culture kids find home. But I think the new iteration after our 200th episode given to us by Her Excellency is obviously, who are you? What are you made of? Where do you come from? That's the next evolution of what the Ken should be doing. Because I I just, Definitely. I see it makes sense, really right? Hashtag. Hashtag. I think that's Hashtag interview. <laughs> Thank you for that, Your Excellency. <laughs> Hashtag, who, whomst are you? Whomst Ooh, even yeah. are you? Because <laughs> 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 yeah, no, they ask themselves the question. It's, everything is just very quick and fast. And, and when we pose and ask ourselves the questions, and I think the, easiest, the, the easier the question is, the tougher the answer is. So, yeah. I completely agree. I completely agree. I think that's that's kind of the perfect note to end this uh, conversation with you on. I mean, honestly, Your Excellency, thank you so much for being with us on this milestone episode. I mean, we're celebrating six years of, and you know, for you to celebrate six years of the Can Show with us, it's interesting because, like, when I first when I first began this, you know, I planned out my one, three, five, and even ten year milestones for the show, and you know, we that we hope to achieve. And alhamdulillah, we've managed to achieve most of those milestones. Uh, so it's been wonderful. So thank you for being part of this. Um, and once again, thank you to our listeners for being part of this journey with us throughout this entire experience. I mean, it's been an honor and a privilege for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, I you know, congratulations on your sixth anniversary. Uh, proud. And, and I, and I hope to celebrate uh, with you the 12th anniversary. So uh, let's keep going and uh, keep doing what you're doing, um, having you. And uh, it's so essential in terms of taking what we're doing to the next level. And uh, having this platform is so important. A voice is important. And thank you for uh, providing a voice to, let's say, me, but others as well. So 
that's that's not a that's not a small role. That's a very important one. So thank you very much. Thank you for kicking it with us today. I hope you enjoyed listening to this week's episode as much as we enjoyed creating it for you. Please subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcast at to stay up to date with all our conversations. Also, if you don't mind, hit us with the five star rating, leave a comment, let us know how you feel about the show. That way it could also help others find the show and be sure to share with your friends and family, whoever you think can benefit from it. You can holler at us on all social media platforms at The Can Show. We'd love to hear from you. Or you could drop us an email to hello at thecanmedia.com. Salam.